Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at Jabuka, a tile-based word game with a twist. Thanks to Jabuka Games for sending us a copy of Jabuka to check out. Now, Jabuka was designed by Martin Rizaki and self-published by him in 2019. It plays two to eight players broken up into four teams maximum. Each game takes 15 minutes to half an hour, depending on how much time you spend trying to find words. Now, Jabuka has an MSRP of 1995 and has won a nice handful of toy and educational game awards. Now, for the record, don't look for a deeper meaning in the name of the game. Anything mm -hmm. you Google about the word is completely unrelated to the game. There are no apples, Serbian cities, or islands involved. I do have to say, I, why? What, what, like, both Sean and I spent a while trying to figure out what this had to do with coffee. What it has to do with coffee is he came up with the idea in a Starbucks. So that's that's the secret to, to where the game came from and the coffee thing. So in a game of Jabuka, you spill the letter beans on the table and players rush to spell words. The neat bit here is that the game uses a special set of letters and letter pairs that can be used multiple ways. For example, the U tile turned the right way could be a C and turned another way could be a small N. Now, along with spelling your own words, players can also steal words from other players by rearranging the letters, adding letters to the opponent's words, or rotating the letters. To get a look at the coffee-themed components in this game, check out our Jabuka unboxing video on YouTube. So the game comes in a small sack-like bag, like, a, you know, a coffee bean bag with a cardboard tag on it. You can tell that's meant to be on store shelves like that. Now, inside, you will find a set of two-sided fold-out instructions and, of course, all the letter tiles. Now, these tiles are made of recycled wood and are shaped like coffee beans. Now, the letters are only on one side of the beans, and the special twistable letters are in yellow, with the rest of the letters being in white. In addition, the game includes eight lighter colored coffee beans that are used as wild cards that have no letters on them. Now, it is worth noting that many of my tiles were stuck together when I opened this up. Now, these weren't difficult to separate, and once separated, I didn't notice any damage to the stuck tiles, but this isn't something my kids wouldn't have been able to do. Like, it did take some strength to kind of snap them apart. There are many factors that could cause the sticking, including recent heat waves, but the designer is reaching out to their manufacturer about the issue we found. So you start a game of Jabuka with the pour. You take the sack and dump the coffee bean-shaped tiles out all over the table. Now, no, you don't flip any of the tiles over, but you do make sure they're all laying flat so the players can see the face-up letters. Now, the players break into four teams, up to four teams, sorry. Each team takes two of the light-colored tiles with no letters on them as wild cards. So you say four teams, but this game plays two to eight players. Yes. Uh, is there any variant rules for two to three players or? No, nope. no. With two to, with two players, you're each on your own team. With three players, you're each on your own team or two players could pair up against the other. It's, it's just the, the max though is four teams. Now, what happens though with your teams is that it dictates whose words you're going to add together. So if you and I are a team, you're going to grab your own words and put them in front of you. But at the end of the game, we're going to get points for both of ours. And it matters for stealing, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, letters are on the table. Everyone's going to look and try to find words, right? When you spot a word, you're going to say it out loud. This is an important rule of the game. And then grab the individual beans that make up that word and place the completed word in front of you. Note that if two players say the same word, the player who grabs the beans first gets the word. Also, if someone grabs a bean for your word before you can finish spelling it in front of you, you have to put the letters back and find a new word. Now, with this, this isn't meant to be a game of spoons. There's no wrestling around. There's no fighting over beans. The first person to touch the bean gets it. No jostling each other or anything like that. I, I just feel like with some groups, this game sounds like it could use a referee. Mm -hmm. Uh, there wasn't a problem in our games, but we were playing with our kids and it didn't get too uh, too hot and heated. But yeah, I could definitely see a couple people like trying to, oh, or try to try to steal it. Now, a neat part of this is someone can, if they hear you say a word, try to find a word that uses the other letters and say it quickly to be able to grab theirs. But note, there is that time of having to say the word. So usually you can grab your letters pretty quickly. Now, in addition to spelling your own words, players can also steal words from the opponent's teams. And this is done in one of three ways. Rearrange a word. Move the letters in the word around to make a new word. Add letters of a word to make a new word. Uh, this could be at the end, in the middle, and you can add as many letters as you want. Uh, 
or rotating the special Jabuka letters to form a new word. Because again, you have a bunch of multi-use letters that can be used at least two different ways on all of them. And you can combine all of these. So you could add a new letter and rotate a letter and rearrange things to steal a word. Now, while a word can get stolen multiple times, you can't reuse an earlier form of that word to steal it back. So you can't be like, well, I put war and I put um, and I changed it to raw. And then you're like, well, I'm going to change raw to war. Well, no, I'm going to change war to raw. You can't do that. You can't reuse the same word with the same letters. So not only do you have to manage grabbing the right tiles for the words you've said, who touches what in what order, and you have to track, at least keep in mind, what words have been used mm -hmm. so that no one can go back to an earlier one that has already been used with a grouping. Yeah, there is definitely a memory element to this game. Even when you're looking on Board Game Geek, one of the mechanics listed for this is memory. Similar, like like if, if a player forgets the previous form on your, of a word you had, the opponent's welcome to steal it back. That is totally a legal move. Okay, so you can you you can cheat as per se if, in, in a no way, one, yeah. As long as no one catches you, as long as no one catches you, and that's important. There is actually a section of the rules about how quick, right? Like how by the time you're spelling your next word, you can't back up. Is one of the rules. Now, remember the beginning. You poured the beans. Well, some of them are going to end up face down. So at some point, players are going to start having a hard time finding words. At any point, any player playing can say flip. Everyone agrees. You flip the tiles. Now, there's a strategy here where a player could be like, hell no, I still see four more words. I'm not flipping anything. You go flip yourself, and I'm going to keep building stuff. But once everyone does agree, each team flips two more tiles. And then they make words, and you keep going. You keep doing this until the final flip, when the last beans become face up. The first player after that that makes a word says Jabuka, and as soon as they finish the cut, the game stops, wherever you are. If you're halfway through playing a word, you got to put it back. Teams then out, how many beans they have. Literally count the pieces. Team with the most pieces wins the game. All right, well, now that you've given us an overview of play, what did you think of Jabuka? So when I was first contacted by Martin, the designer of Jabuka, on Instagram, it took a quick look at the webpage. And I was like, I need this. I got to get this game. I have to check this out. And I was so excited to test this because of the way it uses letters for other letters by twisting them. This is something my kids have been doing for the last few years on our fridge. Like over the years, and I think every parent has this exact same thing happen, we've collected a number of letter and number magnets from various toys, and none of those sets are complete anymore. Due to this, we're missing a number of letters and numbers, and we don't have enough of certain numbers and so on. And Deanna and I have both been blown away by our kids' creativity in using the letters we do have to spell things out. And that's what got me excited about Jabuka. Indeed, the concept really caught my eye when you shared it to me as well. I think many, many families have this <clears throat> same shared fridge letters experience. I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to like go on Twitter and see if I can start a, a viral post on who else does this type of thing. Now, when I first dumped out the beans, I was really excited. I wanted to see what they'd done, right? I want to see this. I, I, I loved the look, weight, and texture of the beans. Like they feel very light, like coffee beans, you expect to be kind of heavy, they're not. If you've ever had roasted coffee beans, they're like very, and they make a really good sound when dumping in there. Like just the clatter is fantastic. We should note that these are recycled wood. Yes. Uh, so this big game has a very low carbon footprint, again, because they're not, this is, there's no box, it's just a bag. Yep. Now, what I wasn't expecting is that you don't get to do it yourself. It's not up to the players to figure out what words or letters are twistable. The twistable letters are in a different color. And along with this, each letter can only be used to make specific other letters. Like there's a chart in the rule book to show all the legal letter swaps. This kind of surprised me. I expected this to be more freeform. I expected you to be able to make whatever you want out of any or all the letters. Like with this, my entire family, because we've been playing the fridge game for the last few years, felt there were some omissions. Like, where's the capital I that could also be a small L? Or where's the Z you turn on its side to be an N? Or why can't I flip a V over as an A? So somewhat less flexible than your average eight-year-old with magnet letters on the page. Yes. Now, the other surprise for me was the fact there are two letter combinations. Now, Sean also checked out the webpage. I'm wondering if you noticed it. But, like, I had no clue those were in there. 
like I thought this was really cool. Like this is something I can't do on my Frank magnets. I don't have the 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 two letter stuff, which uh, one's NG, and when you flip it, it's uh, I and now I forget UD or whatever. I don't know. They all work. I'm forgetting off the top of my head. Like I actually went back today and went back to their web page, and in one picture they show one, but it's definitely not something they highlighted. And I appreciate this. This is cool. I like this aspect. That was something that that wasn't really highlighted in the marketing material. So that's a bonus. Yeah, and while there are some things missing that we wish were there, this is a nice addition yeah. that we weren't expecting. Exactly. Now, I'll admit, I called the designer out. I'm like, I showed them pictures of my fridge and the stuff I, my kids have done, like sevens as T's using leet speech and um, X's as K's when put next to another letter. And they've come up with some really creative stuff. And I said, why didn't you use some of the obvious swaps, right? And the designer wrote back and said, the main thing is it's meant to be a part of you. This is supposed to be quick and easy to teach. And by saying the yellow ones are special, don't worry about the others, makes a, your decision uh, tree smaller. You don't have to worry about the white letters. You can't flip those. You only have to worry about the yellow ones. And then he also wanted it to be very clear what letters could be used as what to avoid arguments. So you don't have someone new coming in and going, well, that's not a, that doesn't actually look like an X. That's a T like, the, the thing's obviously smaller. There's no way that's an X, right? You want to avoid those arguments. And I guess I get it. Yeah, I. everyone's idea of a party is different, I guess. <laughs> so, well, not quite what I expected. Uh, the, the Jabuka letter set does work. Like, it works while you're playing. Um, it really does require some creative thinking in order to build words with the set and even more imagination to use ways to use these twisty letters and pairs to steal words. And that stealing word aspect is something else that it, I, I don't know about unique completely, but it's definitely unusual for letter tile games, tile letter games, right? Like I honestly have not played and can't think of any other game that lets you steal opponents words by modifying them. Yes, there's building on other words in Scrabble and building on top of words and upwards, but like you don't take the word. It doesn't become yours. You're just building on a central tableau. I've never seen it in a game where every player has their own collection of completed words that can be stolen. And then there's that whole rush to grab the letters mechanic, right? What these two combined do is make for a very cutthroat game. And that means this is not going to be for everyone, even word game fans. Indeed, as we pointed out, I'm not the biggest fan of the real cutthroat games. And I have to say, as a result, this one isn't sitting with me quite as well as I'd hoped when mm -hmm. I first saw the concepts and the images and the, the press material. Now, as for me and my family, we have only played this with the immediate family. Uh, my wife, Deanna, and our two girls, we dig it. This is a neat word game. Uh, it does some things different from some other similar games on the market. Now, I admit, uh, we may be a bit biased because of the Fridge Magnet game, and this reminds me of that. So we already liked that playing with letters. That system works really well. It, it does a good job of recreating the Fridge Magnet game. And I really dig the letter pairs because I didn't expect that at all. That blew me away. And the ways you can twist these to make multiple different letters. Um, the designer has pointed out with war, you can actually make nine different words with the tiles for war because of how you can rotate them, flip them, and rearrange them, which I think is really cool. Um, what I do wish is there was a bit more variety. I do understand keeping things simple to make the game mass market available. My biggest concern with this game, though, is that real-time competitive nature of the game. While some families are going to be up for fast, furious fun with players trying to grab letters before the other players and stealing each other's words and screwing each other over, other families are going to prefer a less confrontational style of word game. Now, I will say... This is not in the rule book. This is breaking the rules. This is house ruling. There's nothing stopping you for playing this as a more turn-based game, removing the take that aspects. Like players take turns making a word. You make a word, you look, you make your word, try to make as big as possible. Then you make a word, then you make a word, and we all decide when to flip. That would work perfectly fine. Remove the ability to steal words. I think the game would still work. But again, that is not how the game is written or how it's designed to be played. I, one concern I have and why I think I wouldn't play this with my family is that I feel like my youngest child might be hesitant about their word knowledge, mm -hmm. word, word knowledge, especially against mom and dad, enough to hold them back and really lose out as a result of that hesitancy. Because right. it sounds like you really need to dive in without fear to get the most out of this game. Well, 
I, that's definitely been true in our games, right? So, so one of my kids is an avid reader, a student, really impressive vocabulary, and she loved the game. She thought it was fantastic. She kicks my butt every time we play against each other. And I still haven't gotten her to sit down. I was hoping to get it today to have a mother-daughter game because Dan is the big word game fan out of the two of us. Now, my other daughter, who does like to read, does struggle with spelling grammar. And due to that, did not like this game at all. Um, she honestly kind of had a meltdown the first time playing. She particularly hated the fact that she would work really hard to build a word, even something small like pig, and then someone else could steal her hard one word. And, and it took her so much effort to even make that one word that that was devastating for her to have stuff stolen. All right, well, to wrap things up, if you dig word games, I do recommend giving Jabuka a try. It's definitely not just another word tile game. It's not just another Bananagrams. It's not just another Scrabble tiles. It's not another, I can't even remember what the Apple one's called, the comes in an Apple. This is something different. It adds an additional twist, pun intended, in both the multi-use tiles and the ability to steal words from the opposing team. If you're not a word game fan, you probably aren't even listening anymore and have already hit skip and went to the next section. Uh, if you have, stuck around i'm sorry to say i don't think jabuka is going to win you over like maybe if you just like really cutthroat games where you can stab your opponents in the back and like stealing things from your opponents to win you might enjoy that now what i will say if you own a coffee shop you should be reaching out to these people possibly for a sponsorship and just get some copies in your store sell it like the coffee bean theme here is perfect Plus, it's just something cool to have out on the tables for patrons to play with. As something sitting out on the table, I can absolutely see people really taking advantage of this. Making up their own games and just having fun with words and the rotatable letters, even if you never learn mm -hmm. or even know that it's a bigger game than that. Yeah, exactly. Like, because in addition to being an interesting word game, I think the tiles here are just cool. Like, they're cool to have. They remind me of Not Dice, which we reviewed quite a ways back here, where you could just dump them out on a coffee table, have them on an end table for guests to fiddle with. Also, these are a really great learning tool for teachers and parents, for getting kids to think outside the box with letters and playing around with letters. Ignore the game. Just use the components for a teaching tool. Well, that's it for our look at Jabuka. I invite you to read more about Jabuka in the review section of the blog over at tabletopbellhop.com.